Welcome back. Today we're talking about custom application windows. To get started on this tutorial, all we need is an empty window. Throughout this tutorial, we've talked about various styles, various controls, and how to lay out your UI, but we haven't talked very much about the window itself. Now, later down the road, when we get into more complex stylings, we'll go into what's called a control template, which is how you can actually modify existing things on your UI or controls that already exist. But one very simple and easy way to create a custom window is to basically get rid of this and make your own. To do that, the first thing we need to look at is the window style property. Your options are none, single border, 3D, or tool. So the single border is the default. That's what you see here. It comes with a title bar and a border all the way around. The 3D border window is basically the exact same as the single border, unless you're in, I believe it's Windows Classic theme. So either one of these are going to look the same in the modern theme. And then the tool window, instead of having the three buttons, it's going to leave you with only an X button, very small in the corner, like this. So what we want to create our own window is we want none. And that's going to leave nothing in our window at all, just a blank slate that we can handle inside of our grid. Now, the first thing most people probably think is, okay, well now how do I minimize, maximize, or close? But the first thing that we need to think about is how do we move the window? Without a title bar, we can't click and drag. So the only way that the user can move our window is by kind of inchworming it across by resizing it. So we need a way that on mouse down, we can move this around. So let's go in our window and let's look for mouse left button down event. You'll see the lightning bolt. It's kind of like the selection changed event we dealt with before. Add a new event handler for it. So now we're saying anytime in this whole window, the user's left button on their mouse is pressed down, this event handler will fire. So if we go to our code behind, in here, what we want to do is called drag move. And now since we're in the main window, the main window has the method drag move. So now when their mouse is pressed, we can call drag move on the window. So when we run, we can push our mouse button down and move it around. So now it doesn't only have to be on the title bar. It can be anywhere that's not an active control. Now, if you want it to only be on the title bar, you can restrict your drag move to a row of a grid or another control, no problem. But being able to drag any point of a window can be a really nice feature to have. Okay, so now let's go back to our main window. And inside of our grid, let's go ahead and add some row definitions. Let's just add two. Let's make the height of the top one 40. So now we have an area for our title bar, maybe a little big, but it'll work for us. So instead of going with some super complicated layout, let's just for now make a stack panel, make the orientation horizontal, and let's make the horizontal alignment to the right. That means our stack panel is going to start over here on the right and stack horizontally whatever we put in it. So that can be our minimize, maximize, and close buttons. So let's go ahead and go in here and add a button. We'll call it BTN close. Put the content an X for now. We don't have any icons, but let's do say width 40, height 40. It's gonna be a rather large button. Now let's make the border brush transparent and the background also transparent so the button will blend in. And there is our gigantic close button. So if we run, it's not going to have a background or a border, but it will have the hover color. But right now when we click it, it doesn't do anything. So let's go ahead and take this button, go ahead and copy, paste it twice. So we're going to have three buttons. Let's rename this button minimize and let's name this button maximize. So now we have three buttons. Again, for quickness, I'm going to make minimize and underscore. And then I'm going to copy and paste the maximize emoji. So now we have three enormous title bar buttons. So for each one of our buttons, let's create a click handler. So we'll say click, new handler, click, new handler, and click, new handler. So now in our code behind, we have a method for when our minimize, maximize, and close buttons are clicked. So let's start with the close button. There are several ways we could handle this. The first one being the Windows close method itself. Now that's built into window and therefore main window. And all it does is close the window. So if you're running and you push this button, it's going to close this window. Because this is main window, that also means it's shutting our application down. But if we had fired another window from main window, 
and used close function, it would only close that window that you were pushing the X on and not close the application. Now, if for some reason you need this button to always close the application, no matter where it is, you could use application.current.shutdown. And no matter where this is fired from, it is going to close the entire application. Generally, close is sufficient because usually you don't want to shut the application down. You want to close the window that you are on. So next let's talk about the minimize button and instead of using the window style property we're going to use the window state property we are going to set our window state to window state dot minimized and as simple as that we have a working minimize button now maximize is a bit more tricky because in a normal application the maximize button also serves as a restore button so when we click this it would maximize it but if it's already maximized and we click it, it would return it to this size. To do that, we need to check to see if our window state is already maximized. So if we are already maximized, what we want to do is set our window state to window state normal. Otherwise, we're not maximized, so we want to set our window state equals window state maximized. So now if we run, we are in a normal, meaning not minimized or maximized state. When we click our maximize button, it will maximize it. And if we are maximized and we click our maximize button, it will restore it to its normal state and position. So now we have a working window, drag, move, resize, all the buttons, they all work. But there's one more very important thing that comes along with making a fully custom WPF window. So we haven't been able to see this yet because our background is white. But say we want our background to have another color. Let's say we want a dark theme and we want, say, hex 333, 333. So a very dark gray. Now, in addition to that, let's go ahead and make the foreground of our buttons a white so we can see them better. Go ahead and copy and paste that into all of our buttons. But when we run this, what we would expect is to see our gray window. But instead, we get our gray window with this white strip up top. And it looks like a resize bar, but really we can resize our window on any side. So what's actually happening is when we set window style to none, it removed the title bar and the non-client portion of our UI, but it left this portion of that by default. The way to remove that is to actually go inside our window, but outside of our grid and access our window chromes, window chrome, and change the window chrome. So we want glass frame thickness zero. We want corner radius zero and we want caption height zero. And that is going to zero out all of those things on our window chrome, leaving us with a solid but still resizable window that gives us the full area of our window to customize. So that wraps up the basics of making a custom window. I hope you have fun styling it to your liking. Next up, we're going to talk about opening new windows, both regular and modal. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask Happy coding and until next time as always, take care.